Keir Starmer has promised a new publicly owned renewable energy company as part of a plan that he hopes will get Labour back into power. In his keynote speech at the party conference yesterday, the leader of the opposition also pledged to invest in the NHS, make Brexit work and spread opportunity to all. Sir Keir Starmer joins us now from Liverpool. Very good morning to you, Sir Keir Starmer. We have this warning from the International Monetary Fund this morning asking the government to re-evaluate its tax plans. You've already committed the Labour Party, if they came into government, to some of those tax cuts. So which ones are you going to stick with and how much would that leave you short for your spending plans? Well, you referenced the IMF, and obviously that statement is very, very serious. Uh, it comes on the back of the Bank of England statement earlier this week. And I think it just shows how serious the situation that's been caused by the statement that was made by the Chancellor on Friday, a self-inflicted wound which is being felt by millions of people across the country in increased mortgages and prices. Now, we've been very clear that we wouldn't have... Um, cut the top rate tax from 45 to 40. We certainly uh, wouldn't be, um, you know, dealing with the corporation tax in the way they are. We would cancel a cut in relation to that and we would deal with non-DOM status. So there's a lot of difference between us and the government on this. And we've been very clear on the energy price freeze that we would have a windfall tax. But I can't emphasise enough, I think, just how bad the situation is the government has caused. Quite often we see those graphs the pound, um, you know, going up and down, this time falling, and um, it's the result of external factors that it's very difficult to control, you know, the, the war in Ukraine, you know, a global crisis of some sort. This is a self-inflicted wound. It's a government that has taken reckless action on Friday. And for what? OK. For what? Right, OK, so can, uh, it, can it, I, but, so can the, I intervene what at is, this is, point? Is to uh, tax cuts for the, those yeah. at the very, very top. The, I mean, the tax honestly, cuts for the very, uh, very top, so many people Sakir, are facing... The tax cuts for the very, very top, you would then um, reinstate that tax rate, which would bring back just over £2 billion. Yes. Very, very useful. However, you have committed to sticking to the one pence off the basic rate of income tax, that's five billion, and you would commit to reversing that national insurance hike. That's 15.3 billion. So actually the top rate is the yes. smallest amount of all of these cuts. Yeah. Yeah, but that leaves out of account the other things that we've said, which is that on corporation tax, we would cancel the cut, and that's up to £18 billion. We don't think that's the right thing. Businesses aren't asking um, for a corporation uh, tax to be kept where it is. Uh, they're asking for a government that's serious about change. Um, we've said we would have a windfall tax on the oil and gas companies who made excess profits. There's tens of billions of pounds that the, is on the table that the government is simply refusing to touch. And we would change the non-DOM uh, status, which again would raise two or three billion pounds. So there's lots of ways in which a Labour confident, carefully thought through plan would actually have revenue which the government is just leaving to one side. And this plan of theirs is driven, is driven by this ideology that the only way to to improve our country is to make the rich richer. That is so wrong. They, they've got this idea that somehow then it might trickle down to other people over a period of time. What we've got is taxes down for the richest and prices up for working people. It's the worst of all situations to find ourselves in. Sakir, so you've talked about the importance of stability, economic competence, criticised the government's economic plans in the last few days, as have yeah. the IMF. Um, your big proposal yesterday for a British energy company, which will invest huge amounts of money, billions of pounds in renewables, nuclear, wind, tidal. As I understand it, yeah. that's going to be paid for by an increase in public borrowing, £28 billion a year, more than the government is currently planning. Is it going to be possible to persuade the yeah. markets that your borrowing, £28 billion more, is OK when you're simultaneously accusing the government's borrowing of being reckless and pushing interest rates up. How will you explain that to people? Well, Ed, it's very, very simple. At last year's conference, we set out fiscal rules, which is that we would pay for day-to-day -day spend, we would borrow to invest. And this is borrowing 
to invest, and we would stick to those rules. They think the government's on its tenth breach of its own rules. So there's a massive difference between us and the government on that. But in relation to this, Ed, uh, what I set out yesterday was that if you look at, let's say, the biggest onshore wind farm in Wales, that's owned by Sweden, and therefore people in Wales are paying bills that are going to you know, public services in Stockholm. The Chinese Communist Party has a stake in our nuclear sector, and five million people across the country are paying bills which end up in a company that's owned by France. I want to make sure that Britain has a stake in that as we go forward. So it's investing to ensure that we have the stake. So when those bills are paid, when those rewards come in, they come in to a fund which actually can be used in Britain. And actually, when I've spoken to the CEOs of huge companies, what they say to me is, Kia, we want a clear plan from the government. We want stability. We want certainty so that we can okay. invest. And all the, money that, all the money that we will put in through our sovereign wealth fund will be matched by and, and uh, you know, allow private investment to go in alongside okay. it. So this can is I a confident, you... carefully thought through plan. Right. The complete opposite so, Keir, can of the I mess we find about... ourselves in with the government. Yeah, we, we're very limited on time. Um, but I just want to ask you yeah. about um, strikes, actually. CWU, Royal Mail workers, have just said 19 days of strikes throughout October and November. That will sink the hearts of anyone. Um, who, yeah. you know, is looking forward to getting their Christmas shopping, for instance, done and delivered. Do you support those strikes? And if any of your front benches go out and support those picket lines, what will you do? Well, I want to see those situations resolved. Nobody wants to see strikes. The CWU doesn't want to see strikes. I spoke to the CWU last week about this. And there are clearly things that the management should do to de-escalate this. Um, some of the proposals they put on the table are not the right proposals. They should take those off the table. This is resolvable. Um, and when it comes to strikes generally, I completely understand why with mortgages going up, prices going up, all because of self-inflicted harm by the government, wages not going up, people are very, very pushed. And industrial action is a last resort. Of course it causes disruption. Nobody wants that. It's very hard for those people who are striking because, of course, they're losing money. Well, so I want to what, see this what resolved. If front I was speaking to CW about it last week. Lines. Well, look, I don't think that the role of politicians is to go on to picket lines. I think the role of politicians is to fix okay. the underlying problems. And what very I quick, want um, to do... Very quick final question, no, no, I'm sorry to Very, very, very important, because the single most important thing I can do to help working people, particularly those on strike, struggling to pay their bills, is have a Labour government which will fix the cost of living crisis and actually set a framework for stability in this country, which we're crying out for after the mess that final, this government Final, very made. quick question, Sakia. Um, the comments made yesterday by Rupa Huck... She's apologised for them. She described Kwasi yeah. Kwarteng as being superficially, he is a black man. What she said was racist, wasn't it? Yes. And that's why I'm pleased that the Labour Party took very swift action. Thank mm -hmm. you, Sakir Starmer. Um, and uh, good luck for the rest of your conference today. Thank you very much.